So in C++, we become very aware of the size of our types and what types are made of. In uh, other languages like Java and C Sharp, those, uh, these concepts still hold true. We just don't pay attention to them as much, especially uh, when we're not doing games or anything that really needs speed or time or has to take up less room. Um, because it really doesn't matter. Uh, we've got endless RAM, right? And we can waste it away all we want. But in games, it's not such the case. We, we need to be aware of our types, our sizes, uh, where things go in memory, that kind of stuff. So I want to talk a little bit about sizes. And to get us started, I'm going to say size of int. And let's uh, end that. And, and uh, size of is probably new to you, unless you've seen it in other languages. But essentially, size of will tell us the size of either a type or a variable. And just when you put a variable in, it uses, it relies on the variable's uh, type. Anyway, see so out the size of an int, run it, and we see that the size of an int on my machine is four bytes. Uh, we can do the size of a long, a long, oh, on my machine is four bytes as well. Uh, let's do float, uh, four bytes as well, and just for tickles, I'm going to say double. And we see that a double takes up eight bytes. So anyway, depending on the compiler and the platform, you can have different sizes for different types, which is uh, tedious. And that's one of the problems that C Sharp is trying to solve. But it's a problem we have, and it's a problem we have to deal with. And especially in C++, there's a lot of problems we have to deal with that are probably unnecessary. But they're there, and, and we deal with them. Anyway, double, or int, let's go back to int, because ints are easy and common. Uh, are c considered atomic types. And atomic, back in the day when theologians or theologians or however you say the word, would theologize, they dis they discovered or they felt at the time that an atom was the smallest unit uh, of the universe, which we know now is not true. But at the time, that's what they could come up with, is an atom is the smallest thing ever. And there's nothing smaller than an atom. You can't break an atom up uh, and all elements are built of atoms. So, a so when we say a type is atomic, we're basically saying it can't be broken up anymore. So an int is as small as it get is it is a basic type. Another term we use for it that I think is more common actually is primitive. It is a primitive type. So let's take that to the next level. If you think of a home or an apartment, depending on what you live in, um, it it is made up of elements. Uh, some of those elements could be a kitchen cabinet, uh, and it could have a few cabinets in it, and it could have a stove, and it could have a door, and those other things. But when you think about it, a cabinet uh, can be broken down into even m more basic elements, such as um, planks of wood, uh, glue, nails, uh, those kind of things. And if you think about it, a nail well, what could you break a nail down into? Well, technically, you could break it down to an atom, but let's let's pretend now that that doesn't exist. Um, but basically, a nail is the atomic or primitive uh, type used or element used to build a cabinet or glue or whatever. Anyway, so let's make a class here. Let's call it cabinet. And this class will have, th let's give it three members, float, um, width, float height, float depth, with a C on the end, why not? Um, and now we have a cabinet. Well, so if I say size of cabinet here, well, what is the size of a cabinet? Well, it has three floats, and we just saw earlier that each float takes four bytes. So if I have three floats, and each one takes four bytes, then 3 times 4 is 12, or at least last time I checked it was. Uh, let's run this. Size of cabinet prints out 12. Good. We'd expect that. So when I say here, I say a cabinet. And let's just say, oh, you know, cabinet one's more, kind of boring. Let's do first cabinet because it requires more typing and more thinking on my part. Um, so, so size of, right now I'm saying size of a type, but I can also say size of a variable. And, um, well, first cabinet is of type cabinet, and cabinet has three floats. The floats are primitive, but the cabinet is not because it can be further broken down 
into its components, which is three floats, or which, yeah, anyway. Uh, run it, size of first cabinet is still 12. That's making me feel good that it didn't change. Um, but let's say we want to make a home, and so class home, put a semicolon here, and uh, let's say our home has two cabinets, so cabinet, cabinet one, hey look, I just went back to the other naming convention, let's do cabinet two as well. If you notice, I cut and pasted a line real quickly. To cut a line, you just hit control L. So home has two cabinets. Cabinets are not primitive, neither is home. In fact, home is less primitive than cabinet because the home is uh, composed of two cabinets. And, if, and then ca cabinets are further composed of two primitive or three primitive types of floats. So when I say, um, let's get rid of cabinet here and say home, my home, and I say see out the size of my home. Well, my home is made up of two cabinets. Each cabinet takes up 12 bytes because each cabinet has three floats, four bytes each. So two cabinets would make 24 bytes total. So I'll see out the size of my home, and that is 24 bytes. Good. I'm glad it was, because if it wasn't, I would have some explaining to do, or I would have to wave my hand at it and, pre and pretend like I knew what I was talking about. Anyway, uh, so if you think about that, when I say home my home, and earlier I showed you that this um, <coughs> runs the constructor, which home doesn't have, so the compiler builds one automatically behind the scenes. Excuse me while I wave my hand. But more importantly, the compiler has to establish or insert the instructions to put a home instance on the runtime stack. And, and that's important. So to put a home on the stack, the compiler has to take up 24 bytes. And if I have two homes, whoopsie two homes and my home and let's say your home let's say we live next to each other that's nice good uh, warm feeling that we're neighbors well now 24 bytes for the first one 24 bytes for the second one and essentially the stack can grow as much as I want to I could put homes on here all day whoopsie and if I went too outlandish maybe I would come up with a stack overflow exception it would probably take several homes of 24 bytes each to do that but Anyway, I hope you get the gist there of the size of a home. We're going to get very intimate with our our types and classes uh, to the point that we're going to pick them apart uh, very closely in RAM. We need to be aware of how they're laid out in RAM, how they're placed in RAM, because uh, it's crucial in maintaining uh, frame rate of your game.